Security, Governors and Representatives from East and West Paradise, Heads of Tribal Governments, Twin Kingdom of Paramekamoy, Prime Minister, and Representatives of Mekamoy National Government, Representatives of ABG, Governor of Central Bank, Deputy Governor, Bankers of the Crown, of Fiat, uh, uh, Chief Governor, North uh, Kingdom Ministries for New Haven and New Earth, uh, Commanders and Soldiers of the Crown, Papala Minister Workforce, uh, Remote Perpetration of Government, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you everyone. I welcome you all to the opening ceremony of our 40 days, 40 nights uh, celebrations of another powerful year. <laughs> you all know that our new year started last week on 1st of Jasper, 1624. <laughs> We celebrated the day with traditional twig drums from our house caramel. The world around us was shocked because they didn't know that it was our new year. <laughs> they live according to the dictations of the Roman Gregorian calendar. In other words, those who live according to the Roman Gregorian calendar are still living under foreign control, foreign manipulation, foreign mindset, foreign interpretation, and foreign slavery. We feel sorry for them and must rescue them as soon as possible. Why? Because every single day, month, and year, they worship Roman gods, knowingly or unknowingly. For example, in January, they worship Janus, the Roman god of gates, doorways, beginnings, and endings. In February, they worship Februus, the Et Etruscan god of death. In March, they worship Mars, the god of war. In May and June, they worship Maya, Maitas, and Juno, the Roman goddess, and wives of Jupiter, and so on. All these are foreign Roman gods. In other words, the pagan Roman Empire is still ruling the world through its calendar and religion. If we don't rescue them, no one will. And one of the ways to rescue them is by matching, equalizing, and replacing their calendar with our own. It's the same with everything else that our colonizers came and imposed upon us, including the monetary system, the banking system, currency system, financial system, economic system, trade and commerce system, political and governing system, legal and judicial system, education training system, information system, religious and doctrinal system, interpretations, and so on. We are now 100% free, independent, and sovereign. Now that we are free, our next task is to go and rescue the rest of the suffering world out there. That's why I made you multi-millionaires, billionaires, and trillionaires. I've empowered and equipped you with more than enough funds to help those, to help me rescue the suffering world out there. I've trained you enough. If you don't do it, who will? There's no one out there who will come, and come from heaven or not from the sky to save us. It's you and I. Four disillusionments. I have talked about my four disillusionments before, and I would like to quickly talk about them again to make you understand why and how I came to do what I'm doing today. Firstly, you all know that the road I followed was not easy. It was full of twisted corners, mysteries, disillusionments, struggles, pains, agonies, tears, Lamentations, sufferings, sacrifices, sicknesses, deaths, funerals, miscarriages, uh, misunderstandings, imprisonments, police search, arrest warrants, raids, gun battles, bloodsheds, media propaganda, name callings, mockeries, ridicules, hatreds, the government to extradition orders, Interpol pursuits, personal credit declarations, international delinquent uh, declarations, and so on and on. These are the experiences that qualified me to become who I am today. <laughs> I've talked about my four disillusionments of life many times before. I want to touch on them again to stress the importance of what I'm doing. First disillusionment. As a child growing up, I held the belief that one day I will do something really big to save the world. I did not know what it was, but like all kids, I had the, this intuition within me. At high school, I used to hear our guidance teachers saying something like, if you study hard, you, go, you can go to university and get a bachelor's degree or master's degree or become a doctor, a professor, etc. Uh, they forced us into 
into, into the illusion that professors, professors know everything and have the answers and solutions to for life. However, when I first entered the university and started interacting with my lecturers and professors, I soon realized that they had no solution whatsoever. They had more unresolved problems than myself. They were more concerned about their families, homes, houses, employment, etc., etc. They did not have the answers and solutions I expected. I was totally disillusioned and just, I just had to quit my studies and return home to Bougainville. There was no point in continuing my studies when there was no answer or solution at the end of the day. My one talk friends and schoolmates said I had failed or planned my course, but from my anger, I was only returning home because I was disillusioned by the education system. You see, the whole education system has no answer, no solution whatsoever for us. Look at all the thousands of PhD holders and professors out at universities who have no answer or solution whatsoever for us. For instance, in PhD, PhD now has thousands of masters, PhD holders and professors. The number is increasing every year, but social situation is deteriorating every year. It looks like more than more PhDs and professors, the country produces the more its social, economic, and political fabric deteriorates. Where is the answer? Where is the solution? Look at the political arena, for, it, for instance. Today, there are more educated people in parliament than it was at independence in 1925. There are more graduates, more bachelors, more master's degree holders, more PhDs, and more professors in parliament. However, everything is still deteriorating. The country is now under receivership of the IMF. It's basic bankrupt, basically bankrupt with 60 billion in debt. So what's wrong? What is the answer? Where is the solution? Ladies and gentlemen, all this is happening to confirm again the fact that there's absolutely no answer for us in the established education system. If, I, if it can solve unemployment, homelessness, or sit many in America and Europe or any other country of world matter, we must we must look elsewhere for alternative answers and solutions. You see, all the problems we see in life today are byproducts of the serpentine system. Unemployment is a product, it's a byproduct. Homelessness is another byproduct. Street begging is another byproduct. Street prostitution is another byproduct. Killings, murders, bloodshed, civil wars, uh, crisis, etc., are all byproducts of the serpentine system. I can guarantee you 100% that when our system explodes to the next level, it is going to solve all issues of life. We are going to establish, we are going to establish our own social education system that is able to teach our children how to prosper and live happily and joyfully in the kingdom, just as it is in heaven. Second disillusionment. My second disillusionment was with the ruling world empire America. I said many times, in 1995, I was selected by the American Embassy in PNG to represent the country amongst some 27 to 30 countries. I did not know what criteria they used to select me because I did not even apply for it. I was just roaming the streets of Port Mosby, working with youth in the settlements and uh, an NGO called Foundation for Law and Justice when the U.S. ambassador called me and gave me a ticket and allowances because the person they selected to represent PNG was not available. They wanted an urgent replacement and he said I was the only suitable replacement. Anyway, what I saw in America, the world's richest and greatest world empire, shocked me greatly. Before I visited the country, I had the illusion that our colonizers had all the answers for us. I thought they colonized us because they had all the answers and solutions to give us. But when I visited the country, I was greatly shocked and disillusioned because I could see thousands of unemployed and homeless street beggars, etc. I asked myself, how can it be? I thought America was the greatest world empire with all the solutions to or for, for the world, but what I'm seeing here is totally opposite. What I saw is when I saw street beggars begging the plates and begging me for one dime or one dollar, etc., etc., et I was greatly shocked and disillusioned. And when we visited City Street in New York, and I saw the gap between rich and poor was too big, I became even more shocked and disillusioned. I soon realized that if I don't find the alternative solution, 
assisting for how can we do PSG one day PSG uh, one way we will all become like America our children will largely be unemployed homeless and begging for food on the streets etc by the time I returned from the states my mind had already turned around I started leading student protests against the World Bank and IMF etc because they too don't have any answers or solutions whatsoever to our problems despite the huge funds. All they knew was how to lend money and enslave the governments and nations of the world. Can you imagine a government with trillions and trillions of money? And yet, they have also millions and millions of unemployed people, homeless street beggars, etc. Is there any logic? You see, money itself is not the answer or solution to the world. Money must go hand in hand with a system. You can have all the money and all the three years you want, but without a proper system, all that money is useless. It won't save your country. Again, I'm just outlining my disillusionments that ultimately led me to starting the US drug system. My third disillusionment uh, was with the democratic governing system of PNG. I said this many times that from 1998, 1989 to 98, I was a popular student in the SRC and PNG in the US. We led many student protests, marches, strikes, demonstrations, etc. Many times we joined forces with NGOs and protested until we forcefully changed governments and prime ministers. However, during my 10 year leadership in the student government, I realized that we were wasting, wasting our time protesting and forcefully changing governments as nothing new was happening. Even the new prime ministers and governments we installed were no better. After some time, they became corrupt again, and we had to go through the same process, protesting and demanding them to step down again. Even some of our student leaders protesting with me soon went for elections and became public politicians again. I thought they would go and turn things around. Instead, they got swallowed up by the system. Therefore, I soon realized that everything I was involved in was useless and a total waste of time. I would not, it would not make any difference whatsoever until or unless we change the entire system because it's the system that controls the government of the day, not the other way around. You see, PNG's annual budget is now worth in the tens of billions of Kenya, but all those billions are not helping the country in any way. There's all, where's, where's all the billions of Kenya going to? Its unemployment is rising to levels where it can only be described as a time bomb. There, is more street, there are more street beggars now on the streets of Port Mosby than it was 25 or 30 years ago when I was there. I just read in one of the papers recently that someone made a head count of more than 1,200 1, street beggars sitting around begging in Port Mosby, uh, around Morocco and so on. Uh, 30, 30 years ago, there were less than 100 beggars. Can you see, every year, PNG's annual budget is increasing. At the same time, the number of unemployed, it's unemployed and homeless street beggars is increasing at the same time. In other words, all the billions of money that the government of PNG boasts about has no answer and no solution whatsoever. Therefore, the answer or solution is not in the money itself. You can have billions and trillions of money, but the serpentine system that you abide by has no answer or solution whatsoever for you. Therefore, the answer or solution to all our problems of life is not in money itself, but in the system. The money must move together with the system, not the serpentine system, but the US drug system. This is exactly what we are doing now. Although our money is ready, I must set it together with the system. If I just set it to get without the accompanying system, it will not relieve you for your problems only, only temporarily. It won't be a permanent solution. However, if I send you money together with the system, it will become a permanent solution as you will never ever go hungry again. You will never lack anything again. You will, you will forever have abundance and surplus. Again, I'm just explaining my disillusionments and disappointments leading me to commence the US tax system. My fourth disillusionment. My fourth disillusionment was to do with our own independent struggle here on Bougainville. I saw that each and every time our leaders made a declaration of independence, they immediately surrendered to PNG, Australia, foreign control. 
a first UDI in 1925 was self-defeated when our leaders settled for provincial government. The main reason forcing me them to surrender was finance. If only they had their own money and system in place and operational, I don't think they would have surrendered. Our second UDI in 1990 was also half defeated when half the population surrendered to PNG foreign control. Again, the underlying reason for the surrender was lack of money and system. Again, if only they had their own money and system, they would just punish their own freedom, independence, and nationhood without any problems whatsoever. Money and system control the world. Everything goes around because of money and system. Money is the bloodline of the economy and country. Without our own money and system, Bougainville will continue struggling for independence. More, more importantly, money itself is not enough. Money must go together with the system. With above thoughts and understandings, we proclaim the kingdom of power into place as hardware for the industry monetary system on 21st April 2000 in Port Moresby, PNG. It became known as our third UDI. Then on 16 August 2008 here in Tonu, we proclaimed our fourth UDI into place under the concept of sovereign nation and sovereign system. Again, I'm just outlining my various disillusionments that forced me into establishing the US system. The reason, the reason why I keep talking about these four disillusionments is because I want you to understand the real issues that forced me to start the new global system. Have, have a look at America, the world's greatest and richest empire, and all its internal problems of un un unemployment, street banking, homelessness, crime, violence, etc., etc. Also study our colonizers very clearly. The reason why they colonized us had nothing to do with bettering our lives. They did not colonize us because they loved us, no way. It's not bit difficult to see that the colonizing us was due to their own greed and power. They just wanted to extend their empires over us so they can use our resources, our minerals, etc. according to their desire. Therefore, now that our system and funds are ready and flowing, we are going to recolonize the whole world with a better system. The new system will make sure that there is absolutely no unemployment in the countries, no, no street begging, no homelessness, no crime, no street prostitution, no violence, no arson, no bloodshed, no stealing, no theft, no civil wars, no crisis, no ruin of the problems, no sickness, no disease, no death, etc., etc. Do you know that death can be postponed forever? You don't need to die unless you want to. Fellows, the time is coming, and it is here now, where everyone will have power to override and overrule and to postpone the death forever. You see, death is a power that can be overridden or overruled once you know how. I'm telling you this because I know it myself. I know how to override or overrule the power of death. I will be teaching you more of it later in the process. Overall, let me very quickly explain that everyone in the universe is important. There's no one who is not important. Likewise, every government, church, religion, clan, tribe, interpretation, etc., is important. There's no race or language or religion or church that is not that is more important than the other. I realized this many years ago as a child growing up. I saw that everyone, whether red or yellow, black or white, small or big, short or tall, disabled or, in, or enabled, male or female, is very important. Everyone is doing his or her bit in the big picture. For example, all the churches, religions, governments, kingdoms, nations, etc., are all doing something important. The conflicts they have is mainly due to them being a no overall coordinator for them at universal level. Of course, the UN system presently occupies the position of overall governance of the conventional international system. It tries to provide overall governance, oversight, or coordination of the present world. However, we all know that the UN system is in fact the serpentine system itself, and there's no real answers or solutions whatsoever for us. Most people don't know that the UN headquarters prayer rooms actively promotes a spirit known as Kundalini, which is a form of serpent. I'm just explaining all this so you can see that unless we operate over and above the power of UN 
system we will not succeed in transforming the world. The UN must go. The UN system does not have the solution for us. Even its software system, its financial system, World Bank, IMF, etc. have no solution or Asia for us. This is why I was given the concept of US track in 1998. Under US track, I have the overall universal vision, overall universal strategy, overall universal coordination, and overall universal financial system. You see, there's no shortage of good people. Everyone on the planet is indeed good. There's no bad person. Every church is good, doing its part. Every religion is good, and have accomplished their part of the equation. Every government is good and is doing its best to serve its people. Every kingdom is good and is doing its bit in preserving society. Every country or nation is great and doing their part in the equation. However, despite all the good things they do, there still has been too many conflicts, fights, wars, crises, infightings, etc., etc. Because there's no overall universal coordinator here in the physical world. This is what US track system has been mandated to do. Our role is simply to provide the overall vision, overall strategy, the overall governance, the overall coordination, and overall finance to the whole world. This is very, the very reason why I have made and graduated you as multi-billionaires, billionaires, and trillionaires. Without you, I cannot coordinate and transform the world around us. Without you, I cannot turn the world upside down and downside up. As I said, there is no bad human being on the planet. Everyone has cre was created in the perfect image of God, Yahweh, Kupuna, Tantanu. All they need is someone with the overall universal mandate to coordinate and take care of them. It's the only way for, for the suffering world to live in total peace, love, joy, happiness, etc., etc. Homelessness, unemployment, street begging, street prostitution, violence, etc., etc. Again, the answer or solution to the whole world is in the system. We have been preparing for it all this time. We trained very hard for it over the last 18 to 25 years. And you are now all qualified for it. Most of you are graduates. I graduated you between 2020 and 2021, and therefore I gave you another year thereafter of final training in 2022. This year, from May 2nd onwards, we commenced our economic payout, which is going, still going very strong. Moreover, after this speech, I'm going to take you to another level of funding so you can start moving from out from the Tokyo city with the system and start financing and transforming the world around us. Uh, two great powers. Therefore, every country in the conventional world comes under the United Nations and its software system, the World Bank, IMF, SWIFT, etc., etc. Therefore, they are not sovereign, they are merely independent under the sovereignty of the United Nations. As for us, since we are, we, we don't come under the United Nations, we are 100% sovereign. Our UN equivalent is run, you all know, Royal Assembly of Nations and Kingdoms. You see, the powers of sovereign nation and sovereign system are much higher than the power of the United Nations. Therefore, do not worry about anything. You are 100% sovereign. Your kingdom, nation is 100% sovereign. And your system, you extract, is also 100% sovereign. You are protected with 100% sovereignty. The UN and its software system has absolutely nothing to do with us. We are not part of them. They cannot stop us from conducting our payouts because they don't have any answers or solutions for the suffering world. In other words, the entire shepherd land system has already reached its elastic limit. It cannot keep going anymore. The quicker we move, the quicker it will collapse. I want to formally inform you. I want to stress one more thing, one more point here. In PNG, I have observed the government always referring to those involved in market sales, etc., as informal sector. It uses the terms informal and formal sectors to describe its national economy. This is a wrong and twisted way of describing its own people. PNG does, PNG government does not realize that the bulk of its population are involved with market economy. 
It just brushes them aside, calling them informal sector, and only worries about the so-called formal sector. Can you see what I'm trying to explain? Those of you who, who have participated in PNG or the PMG elections know what, what it means to be informal or formal votes. The same concept is applicable to its economy. The concept, the majority that is involved in market economy is referred to as informal, while the minority involved in businesses is referred to as formal. In our system, however, there's no such thing as informal or formal sector because everything is formal. Everyone is important. Everyone is necessary. Everyone is an image of God, Yahweh, Kupuna, Tantalu, and must be given the same privilege or treatment to participate in the economy. That's why you have been, you have seen how we started our economic payout from market sales economy. Market economy is the most basic economic sector in our system. About market economy comes small enterprise, medium enterprise, and large enterprise, and corporations, and finally governments and the ground. Therefore, when I, when I look back to what we are doing, I'm so happy to see that everyone is being taken care of. When I see our market sales uh, people daily using our banks for deposits and withdrawals, I'm so elated because that's the most basic economy we have. You don't see that happening in PNG because market shares is referred to as informal. Hobby. Ladies and gentlemen, one of my hobbies is to prove everyone wrong. Let me explain. Everyone on the planet has a hobby. Hobby is a pastime or something that you love doing in your spare time. Some people have a hobby for cooking, some people have a hobby for fishing, uh, others have a hobby for hunting, and so on. I have a very special hobby that drives me forward all the time. I realized this hobby right from my childhood days. As I was growing up, I realized a certain hobby that I loved so much. I always wanted to help everyone, but before helping them, I often wanted them to call me names first. I wanted them to hate me, ridicule me, mock me, and say all kinds of things about me first before I would help them and become their best friend again. <laughs> i just give you one example. Once at Buena School, sometimes I would go to, go to the bush camp and cook some rice and bring to a dormitory and just before 9 o'clock p.m. lunch out, I would hide the, the pot of rice somewhere and hide around the flowers somewhere and then if drove to hear what my one talks and schoolmates were saying about me. I would hear them calling me all kinds of names, mocking and ridiculing and swearing at me and so on. Then just before night, night lights out at 9 p.m., I would walk in with my pot of rice and corned beef. As I walked in, everyone would just rush to me and ask me for to give them some food. They would rush to me, get their plates, and share their plates, and so on. Uh, sometimes I would see them fighting against each other because they said too many things, bad things against me uh, when I was away. In most cases, I was happy to see them apologizing for what they say and promised not to call me names again. Anyway, this is just a hobby of mine I enjoyed as a child. That's why even before I started New East Track, in 1998, I had to go through almost four years of mockery, ridicule, name calling, etc., on the streets of Port Mosby. My own one talk from Bougainville would call me all kinds of names like Grom Grom, Mentor, uh, Street Beggar, etc., as I daily traverse the streets of Port Mosby on foot. Uh, even my own schoolmates from university would not believe seeing me walking on the streets of Port Mosby for almost four years. I would walk from one end of the city to the other, example from Creho to town, and to Morocco to Seven Mile, Eight Mile, etc. Every day I would walk on barefoot, meditating and exploring many things in my mind. My schoolmates would drive past with their cars and honk their sirens and feel sorry for me. They thought, oh hey, our SRC vice president, our education executive must have gone mental case. 
He's supposed to be our senior, but now he's roaming the streets without footwear and broken t-shirts like a military retired guy. However, the above, the moment I started New Track in 1998, they all realized and rushed to me. That's exactly why my first two customers on the 8th of July 1998 were my own cousins. Uh, my own cousin brother, Aquila Solomon, representing Bougainville, and Matthew Pare from Enga Province, representing my schoolmates and PNG. Thereafter, everyone, including my one talk schoolmates, and the whole country rushed to me and apologized. I forgave them over and accepted them, everyone, to invest with me. Then, they all became my best friends again because I proved them all wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just explaining my hobby to you because I've seen the same thing happening again over the past 24 years. I have been called all kinds of names by everyone around the world, including governments, politicians, central banks, lawyers, teachers, lecturers, professors, researchers, pastors, evangelists, prophets, apostles, world makers, presidents, prime ministers, etc., etc. I have been ridiculed, mocked, hated, incriminated, shot, etc., etc., by almost everyone around the world. You all know that I'm talking, what I'm talking about. Therefore, I am anticipating a very big uh, round of words of applause, and rounds of thank you and apology from everyone around the world. Although I don't, I don't demand apology from anyone, it will still come naturally because everyone knows what they say or did against me during our establishment process. However, this time it's not only me. It's all of you, my governments, my prime ministers, presidents, governors, managers, administrators, ministers, bankers, doctors, nurses, sisters, carpenters, mechanics, farm workers, pastors, priests, you name it. You have all been ridiculed, hated, or called names because you were attached to me. Therefore, I can just imagine the magnitude of apology and the level of respect and honor the whole world is going to pour upon you. Everyone who called you names is going to run to you and thank you for financing them in return. You are the resource I will use to turn the world, whole world upside down and downside up. Blessing in disguise. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, I'm just too happy to announce that everything on my side is ready, is ready now. Everything, everything has worked out in our favor. The fact that Bougainville's independence declarations have never been recognized by PNG or the United Nations is indeed a blessing in disguise. Our people cry for ratification and recognition, but both, both have not been given. When I came into the scene, onto the scene, I realized that all that was a blessing in disguise. Had PNG or United Nations recognized our independence declarations long time ago, Bougainville would have become another public nation of the UN, just like PNG, Solomon Islands, and all the others. The answer or solution came by way of not ratifying or recognizing our independence declarations. The blatant refusal was a real blessing in disguise. The persistent protraction of the process was or is all in our favor. That's why we can now arise on our own as a sovereign nation with our own sovereign system. We are now 100% sovereign over and above the UN or serpentine system. Just imagine had they recognized or ratified our independence declarations in 1975 or 1990 they would start financing and controlling us. I would not have had the rare opportunity to establish our sovereign global monetary bank and currency system had the UN system was hovering over us in full. Their non-recognition and non-ratification meant that the serpentine system could not rule over us anymore. You see, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to establish a totally new system while another system is controlling you. Controlling you. We, we only managed to establish our sovereign system because PNG and UN gave us a rare opportunity by not recognizing us. You see, non recognition equals freedom. Likewise, non ratification is freedom, independence, or sovereignty, or civilization. It's the same thing with all the other arms of UN. For instance, SWIFT. In 2005, when I applied for SWIFT for a bank, they refused to grant it 
referring us to the Central Bank of PNG. Therefore, I also saw that as an opportunity to create our own new uh, global money transfer system. That's how we have the, our uh, rift wire, our rift trans, our new financial superhighway. I don't think I would have established the rift wire or rift trans had SWIFT accepted my application for IWO and COMPAC. Again, everything is a blessing in disguise. Therefore, there are so many other things we knowingly applied for from the UN or serpentine system just to test out the waters. And you know what? They rejected all our applications, thus clearly forcing us to establish our own 100% sovereignty. It's so good. While everyone around the world is daily begging the UN system, the serpentine system for, for recognition, we are the only ones who saw that UN's refusal is a blessing in disguise and gives the opportunity to arise with our own sovereignty over and above the UN and serpentine system. Great. Uh, summary. Immediately after my speech today, I will start depositing funds into the designated accounts of our stores, shops, corporate accounts, PMA applications, priorities, and so on. Shop owners can then go to Arawa and purchase cargo and come back. Then depending on how fast they move around, the farewell party might be held over the Gregorian weekend so that those from PNG and West Papua can fly out quickly. There's, there's an arrangement done by our run president, the Warwick, to fly into Bougainville within the next few days to pick up all of you. I think it's also the best arrangement because <laughs> I think it's also the best arrangement because it's time to start flying in our own plane. You know? <laughs> However, I will confirm all this late, uh, this late afternoon or tomorrow and let you know. Finally, finally you all know that everything that happens in the world rather than force on leadership. That's why I have been training you all this time through Think and Think. I'm sure that all of you will keep my code of ethics when you go out into the field. The world we see your characters, your manners, your conduct, your way of life, and get their bearing from you. Since the overall vision, overall strategy, overall coordination, overall governance, overall finance, etc., is with us, everyone down the line will be watching and learning from you. In conclusion, as, as, as explained in my speech, everything that has happened is or was a blessing in disguise. All the positions, all the name callings, all the mockeries, all the ridicules, all the hatreds, all the media propaganda, all the rejections, all the refusals, all, the every, all and everything, those in power and authority did to us over the past 25 years was a blessing in disguise. That's why we have now a sovereign system to save the whole world. Thank you.